Hi everyone, it's Ashley and today I will be sharing with you how I created this sunset landscape on the digital drawing app Procreate. What I am using here is an iPad Pro 12.9 inch and a Apple Pencil. I am using just a regular square canvas. To start off, I'm going to head up to the top corner of my screen and pick a light blue color as the background in the sky. To create a gradient, I will be starting with the airbrush from the Procreate default brush pack. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn up my brush size and start at the top of my canvas and work my way to the middle with the blue, lightening as I go down. Since I wanted this to be a sunset piece, I decided to add a strip of orange at the bottom. To help the colors blend a little bit better, I'm going to go to my adjustments tab at the top and select the Gaussian blur. To increase the blur, you slide the Apple Pencil to the right. Then go to your Layers tab and create a new layer. Next, I'm going to start on the mid-ground of the painting. I am grabbing a pretty neutral green from the Color tab and creating a rectangle with the Selection tool. One of my favorite Procreate features is the Color Drag and Drop tool. Next, I transform my sky layer a little bit to bring it up to better see the bottom oranges that I still want to have in my painting. Next, I head up to my layers panel and create a new layer between the two I originally created. Now I'm going to start on the mountains by grabbing a light blue and then grabbing my mountain rock brush texture from my brush pack, which is linked in the description below. To create the mountains, I am using jagged shapes, which I then go back in and use an eraser tool to carve out. With the same brush I had earlier, I go back in and carve out areas where I feel look a little bit too unrealistic. This really adds depth and texture to the mountains, so you can use it to create shadows and highlights later on. With a slightly darker blue, I'm going in and creating a new layer to create some mountains on the left and right hand sides to draw our eye to the middle of the painting. Next, I'm creating a new layer just above our original mountain layer and making a clipping mask. This is going to allow us to only draw on that specific layer without damaging the mountains underneath that we created. I wanted this scene to have a lot of contrast so I picked a bright, vibrant orange against the purple mountains, which makes it look like there is sun hitting them. Using my jagged rock brush, I create rough shapes. There's no right or wrong way to do this, it's just what you feel for the piece. I then go back in with my eraser tool and carve out areas to make them appear more realistic or rocky. This process is also my favorite part, but it takes a lot of patience and practice, and I was frustrated my first few days of learning how to do it because I could not get realistic rock highlights. However, please don't give up yet because there's a lot of ways you can improve, especially looking at reference photos that you take or you can find online. Next, I'm going in with a slightly lighter blue behind the rock highlights to give more depth to the mountains. If you ever took an art class when you were younger, you may have been taught a lesson about shading and balanced light, and that is where creating these rocks is heavily influenced from. There is a surface that is not hitting the light directly and is reflecting the blue light from the sky, and that is what is being expressed when we add these balanced light highlights. Next, I'm going in on my rock layer and double swiping it to lock it. And this makes anything we draw just in that layer only. I am making the highlights slightly darker on the bottom to show that only the light is hitting the top. I like doing this in a lot of my paintings because it expresses mood and shows that little last light of sunlight coming through at the end of the sunset. Next, I am heading to my grass foreground layer and making the scene darker closer to us or at the bottom of the screen. In landscapes, I typically like to follow the rule that darker things are closer to us, which has really helped me line up a few of my paintings and remain consistent. Now I'm going to head to my grass layer and create a river using the same clipping mask technique we used earlier. 
I am using my flat water brush to create this and going in side to side horizontal motions back and forth getting larger the closer it comes to us. Picking the color of water can be a little bit challenging sometimes so I usually follow the rule that whatever color the sky is the water is usually going to reflect that. Next, I'm doing a similar technique that I did with the mountains and going back in with the eraser tool in the same brush and carving out the areas around the water. Next, I'm going to distort my whole river scene to make it appear a little bit more realistic and give it the depth I need. Now I'm going back in with the same green color I used earlier to create more of a foreground at the bottom. Now I'm going to add the reflections to the water. You can do this by going to your layers panel creating a alpha lock on that layer and using an airbrush to reflect the colors of the mountain onto the river below. To pick the colors, I just push and hold with my finger and it'll choose that exact color for me and then I can draw it on the water. It's because there is some yellow in the sky, I am going to add it to the bottom of my river. Next, I'm going in and adding some darker foreground rocks to further add some interesting parts to my painting. I am also following the rule again where things closer to the viewer or person standing in the painting are usually darker or more vibrant. To make it a little bit realistic, I randomly draw my rocks wherever I think they should go and create various sizes and textures and shapes. Then I go back in with my eraser tool and do the same thing I did with the mountains by carving out further shapes and textures. Another awesome thing about digital apps is if you don't like where something is put, you can usually move it. And here I felt like this rock was too much in the way of the mountains and I wanted to show more of the mountains in the background, so I shifted it over to the left using the transform tool. Now I'm going to repeat the same steps that I did on the mountains with these closer up rocks. I'm using a light blue as my reflective bounce light and creating the textures with my rough rock brush tool. For all of my paintings, I like to establish where the light or bounce light is coming from. And in this case, the light or sunlight is coming from the right side of the painting. So all of my highlights will be angled right. You will see me zooming out here a couple times because it helps me look back at the 
large scale of the painting and I usually get caught up in details too quickly, so this helps me. Now I created a new clipping mask and I'm going in with the same color and creating the bounce light we talked about earlier. But this time I'm turning the opacity down so there's not as much intense light on this texture. Once I've got all my different rocks textures, I get to add the highlights to the rocks, which is my absolute favorite because it really adds depth and shows where the sun is shining. I like to do the highlights with an airbrush and start from the top and work my way to the bottom. Next, I go to my sky layer. I grab a rough brush and I create the clouds in the background by doing small circular motions in the direction of the light. Then I repeat the same process using an eraser to erase the back side of the clouds that are hiding from the light. Now I am going to go back to my cloud layer and swipe to the right to lock it and use a warmer orange color to add some more vibrance to the clouds. One of my favorite ways to check my paintings is to flip it horizontally by going up to the Actions tab and choosing Flip Canvas Horizontally. This helps me see from a different perspective if I've got any of my lighting off or if maybe too many rocks or mountains are leaning one direction. Next, you can go in and add slightly darker blues to the back of the clouds to give them a little bit more fluff and shape. The smudge tool is super useful here because it lightly mixes the colors and makes the clouds a little bit more fluffy as well. Sometimes I will go through the different adjustment layers to see if maybe one of them looks a little bit better depending on the sunset, but for this one I'm just going to stick to the normal. Now I'm creating a new layer just above the mountain layer and I'm going to add some atmospheric perspective using an airbrush. Heading back onto my grass layer, I am going to get my flat brush or my rock texture and create some highlights on the grass from the sun hitting it. Depending on the shade of your green, you may need to adjust so the highlights look realistic. In my Adjustments Layer tab, I wanted to turn it down to Overlay, which can add a little bit of more warmth while still using the colors underneath.
Next, I'm going to repeat the same process with a brighter yellow and use an overlay to also add more highlights to the grass. Now I went ahead and flipped it back to the original position we were working in earlier to check it again and continue moving on. Next I add some shadows that would have been cast by the rocks onto the grass with a dark blue green. To brighten up the middle of the painting and draw the viewer's eye to it, I use an overlay layer with a yellow airbrush highlight. Next, to create the individual grass strands, I will go in with an inking brush and Zoom all the way in to hand draw each little blade of grass. I make sure to keep things in perspective by making the grass blades that are farther away much shorter than the ones that are close. I then like to go in with multiple different shades of green to add more detail to the grass. I was almost ready to call this painting done, but I thought adding a ginormous mountain in the background would make it a little bit more interesting. So I created a new layer just behind the original mountain layer and sketched in a big mountain.
using the same process as everything else, I use the eraser tool to go back and forth and carve out different shapes and make it a little bit pointy. I then went back with my clipping mask and created the sunlight highlights with my rock texture and a little bit of fog at the bottom with an airbrush. The last step is going in and adding the shade that is casted on the mountains from the sunset and then we are done. And here is the finished artwork. I truly hope this helped anyone trying to learn how to paint digital landscapes or better understand Procreate. If you would like to learn any more information on my digital painting process or even purchase a landscape, there will be a link provided in the caption. Thank you for watching.